How much, pre you know, you're putting out seven, eight pieces of original content every day. Number one, how much of your day is spent interviewing? And number two, you interview people who are not mainstream, but you have these deep down questions. How much research are you doing on each guest? Or is it just letting them, you know, take off and just run and you're picking up on anything that they might say and be like, hey, this is a great follow-up question? No, 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 no. We, we, we do a lot of research. We, we do a lot of research. That, that person's written books. We, we, we read those books. There's a documentary. We read that, you know, we watch that documentary. We, we go through their Wikipedia page. Or why, we watch their other interviews. We listen to their music. We look at their social media. We, uh, we talk to people that know that person. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we see if there's certain things that have been touched on but haven't really been explored. So when I sit down with somebody, I have a blueprint already. I have mm -hmm. a beginning and an end. Now, along that journey, things veer off in different directions that, that I wasn't expecting. A person mentioned something, it's like, oh, okay, let's go off on this tangent for a while, or I didn't know this, so let me explore this. Because you, you never know. It's like a, you know you don't know what that person is going to say or do. So there's that. And I remember when I was in the UK, I did, I did a, a run where I, I interviewed a bunch of UK artists. I interviewed Tim Westwood and, and, and me and him were talking and he was like, he never does research. He never does, uh, you know, notes. He just likes to feel a vibe and, and do that. And, you know, shit, it's worked for him, right? He's been yeah. doing this. Since, <laughs> Westwood's since been doing it forever. Forever. You know, he, he's a he's a legend at this, but it's a completely different approach to how he does it and how I do it. With me, I, I know what I'm trying to do before I start. It's almost like leading questions. Like, you know, if you, yeah. if you go into a trial, I usually ask a question already knowing the answer to it. And, and that and, and there's also a, an art form in how you. You could ask a very uncomfortable question by easing into that question using some related questions. If I start off and say, in the first 30 seconds, say, okay, so tell me about the guy, the way, the way you know, talk about this murder. Like, you're, you're going to get a very different answer than if that question gets asked 45 minutes into an interview where the person's already explained a lot of things and, and they've already kind of, kind of navigated around it and so forth. So, 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 so there's that. But yeah, it, it's a very... You know, there's a lot of research that gets done. There's a lot of notes that gets done. And, and you know, we, we, there's a lot of preparation. And I think people see that because at the end of the day, it's a story. It's story yeah. time. Yeah. You know, by the time the full interview is, is released, this person is telling a story. And it's a very interesting story. And I'm navigating. The person is telling the story, but I am navigating that story from beginning to end. If I just let the person say it how it is, it'll be a mess. It'll, it'll jump to the end and then they'll start throwing in details from the middle and it'll just be a big jumbled, you know, mess. And, and I've seen other people do interviews without having a blueprint and, and it's all over the place. So, so I, I feel like, like I, I kind of structure it a certain type of way. You know, people have called you the feds, people called you culture vulture, people called you whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Have you ever, but at the end of the day, you're interviewing people, they're providing the answer, you're not putting a gun to their head. Are you ever surprised yourself, sitting on the other side of the table, like, I can't believe this person just admitted to murder, or this person just admitted to whatever. Does it, you know, now we all know that people have discussed murders on your show, on your own um, platform, when this first started happening, were you thrown off? Like, I, I almost can't even believe that they're this open. Well, no, because I already know the story before we start, right? But that and doesn't mean they have to answer the question. Right, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, the person already kind of knows what they're going to talk about when they go on Vlad TV. It's not usually a big shock, right? And if you do a crime and you go to prison and do your time for that crime, or if the crime happened past the statute of limitations, 
a person understands that they could talk about it without any legal repercussions. Now, is it going to, have we put out interviews where we talk about murders and the victim's family gets upset after the fact, or the per person's friends and so forth? Yeah, that, that happens quite a bit. But we're talking about things that have already, you know, are already out there. Like I've never, I've never sat down with someone who has never been arrested in their life and say, Hey, tell me about that 13 year old kid you murdered two years ago. <laughs> like that's never happened. I've, I've never uncovered, I've never solved a crime in the midst of an interview ever. I'm just but, saying just in terms yeah. of shocking information, because to me, right. And I, and, and I hear everything you're saying. It's, I guess it's a, a, a a testament to your interview style. You make people feel comfortable that they're willing to open up. But it sounds like from your end, you're saying, no, Sean, you know, I do what I do and I'm good at what I do. But people, they kind of have an idea of the statute of limitation. They kind of have an idea of any legal ramifications they can run into. So by the time they sit in that interview chair, they're ready to talk anyway. Yeah, like, when I interviewed Keefe D and we talked about the murder of Tupac, you know, cause he was in the car that, that shot up Tupac's car. Uh, we're asking very extreme questions, but he, he had already written a book about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, even when he tried to avoid certain questions, it's like, well, in the book, <laughs> lay all out. so we might as well talk about it. Cause you've already written it, written it in a book that you're one of the authors of. So what, what are we, you know, what are we doing here? Um, so yeah, like the point is, is that people understand what, what, what it is that they're talking about. People understand what they're getting into and, and people ultimately want to tell their story, man. Listen, if you go and do 20 years uh, for a crime that you actually did and now you're out, you want to tell that story. You have the right to tell that story. You, you've done your time. You, you've sat in a cage for, for two decades and, and you know, you, you, you missed out on a whole lot, but you get to tell your story. You know, guys like Teflon Sean from DC um, who, who went to jail for, for murder. And, and it's like, he even said in the interview, like, I didn't kill the guy. My man did. Um, and he tried to come back and, you know, and, and try to, you know, tell the story later on after I convicted, but the judge didn't accept it, you know, but I've done so much, you know, Sean would say I've done so much other dirt that, you know, the 20 years I got, I can't be too mad at because right. there's all, all the other people I, you know, he may have shot or killed that he got away with, you know, I don't know, but he, in the way he answered, it was kind of like, I got away with a lot of shit. So I can't be too mad at, at the 20 years that I did, you know, for, for, what, what my friend did. And at the end of the day, that's my friend. So I'm, I'm willing to do it for him as well. So people want to tell their story, man. And, you know, and not everyone gets a documentary. Like, and, and, and what, what we offer is a chance to, to do a documentary style interview, a life story type feature on that person that's going to live on forever that millions of people are going to watch because waiting for that Netflix documentary, you'll, you'll end up dying before it comes. You know, um, John, John Witherspoon never got a, a documentary about him, but he has a life story interview on Vlad TV that, that all of his fans could still watch to this day. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.